The Chesapeake Bay was once thriving, but pollution of the thousands of creeks and rivers that feed the bay almost turned it into a wasteland. Many people associate pollution with sewage treatment plants or big factories, but the biggest polluter of the Chesapeake Bay is agriculture. In Rockbridge County, that means cows. I'm, I'm trout fishing or, or you know on my way to go, and I look over and there's this big black cow standing in the middle of the stream voiding. Really, those cows shouldn't have access to that common stream. Cow manure and streams in Rockbridge County may seem insignificant to the vast Chesapeake, but as Bay Waterman and researcher Chris Hager explains it, the manure carries chemicals like nitrogen and phosphorus to the bay. They may not affect you in the mountains because there may not be enough phosphorus that, for that water to bloom, but as soon as it comes here, it's got plenty of nitrogen and it just boom. The boom Hager refers to is an increasing number of unnatural algae blooms that suck up oxygen and create dead zones where marine life cannot survive. The fact of the matter is, is that we produce so much phytoplankton that it cannot be consumed by the lower level animals that consume that level of production. It ends up dying and then it falls to the bottom. And when it falls to the bottom, it decays and it uses up the oxygen at the bottom of the bay. And then it creates anoxic zones and then completely zones completely devoid of oxygen and the animals can't use it. Government agencies and extension agents like Tom Stanley in Rockbridge County are helping farmers in Virginia adopt more environmentally safe practices. Riparian buffers that keep livestock out of creeks are one example. Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program is specifically in it for riparian buffers and that's the financial incentive that that's, in, that's provided to landowners and farmers. Um, has been really the primary driver behind the, um, the application of, of riparian buffers and the exclusion of livestock from the stream. Local farmer Zach Eilman views multiple government incentives to restore the creek bank and to build buffers on the land his cows graze. For this project was a little different because um, Damon Inland Fisheries they donated the money for the stream bank restoration for sloping and replanting. But for the fencing and the water crawls, we went through USDA NRTF program. So we had to kind of combine those things and coordinate them together. And it worked really well. Stanley acts as an advisor to local farmers. He believes the incentive programs are vital to the implementation. Uh, but I have great confidence in, in, in saying that if the incentive programs aren't there, then the, um, the rate at which environmental protection practices are adopted will dramatically decline. The incentives are encouraging some local farmers to participate, but many still feel the programs are not in their best interest. Chesapeake Bay researcher Robert Humston believes new incentive programs will help boost compliance. There's some trade-offs there. There's got to be a trade-off between what's practical on the ground and what's necessary for protecting our environment, right? Um, and I think as more subsidy programs that are responsive and uh, ready to compromise like that come on, online, we should probably see more funding of those programs. Some farmers still can't justify protective practices to benefit a bay hundreds of miles away. But as Hager warns, the collapse of the bay would be detrimental to us all. You know, if the marine environment goes to HE double hockey sticks, that's it for all of us, because that's where all our oxygen's coming from. Hallman understands his role in the watershed and takes pride in the section of Walker's Creek that runs through his farm. I feel like we've done such a good job here, and there, the banks are so good, and there's so much vegetation on the banks that, it, like I said, it's like a filter for the folks that aren't doing the greatest job. Funding for the incentive programs may not be available much longer. Last October, House and Senate Agricultural Committee leaders recommended a $23 billion cut to Farm Bill programs. Congress will have a full year starting in January of 2013 to decide how the cuts will be made. If the cuts come from the incentive programs, progress towards environmentally friendly practices will likely be stalled. For farmers who are growing crops instead of livestock, 
It is new technology that is helping them reduce nitrogen and phosphorus runoff from fertilizers. We now literally drill holes and put a seed in there and a machine literally comes along and, and calculates exactly how much uh, nutrients need to go into that hole in order to grow that piece of corn or that soybean. So we're getting better and better through technology with farming. With new technology and a commitment from some farmers, the agricultural industry has limited the nitrogen and phosphorus entering the waterways and destroying the bay. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Tyler Tsikarzik.